A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy for the date 30th of July 2022. Displayed here are the list of news articles that we have chosen for today's discussion and note that specific topics are exclusively for your preliminary examination. Okay? Now without wasting much time, let's get into the first news article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. The news article says that our prime minister launched the India International Bullion Exchange at Gandhi Nagar's gift that is Gujarat International Finance Tech City this is the first international bullion exchange in India so in today's discussion let us see some points about this India International Bullion Exchange but before getting into that let us first see what a bullion exchange is and then the need for setting up a bullion exchange See basically a bullion exchange is a market through which buyers and sellers trade gold and silver. So it is a place where precious metals are traded. See we all know that we Indians have a huge appetite for gold. In 2021 alone India imported 1069 tons of gold. To put this in perspective just consider this. In 1991 we faced a balance of payment crisis and our country was forced to pawn gold to get money from the IMF am i right during that time india paid imf 67 tons of gold but last year alone india imported 1069 tons of gold what this mean see this means that india's economic growth since the 1991 liberalization is immense and the appetite for gold by our countrymen is increasing continuously but the issue here is that until now importing gold into our country is very rigidly controlled currently only nominated banks and agencies approved by the reserve bank of india can import gold It is these nominated banks and agencies that sell gold to dealers and jewelers across the country. The jeweler cannot import gold directly, okay? This is set to change now. As the India International Bullion Exchange is established, this is going to change. So right now, after the establishment of India International Bullion Exchange or IIBX, qualified jewelers will be permitted to import gold through the IIBX. or you can say india international bullion exchange here qualified jewelers are jewelers who are notified by the international financial services centers authority that is ifsca apart from the qualified jewelers non resident indians and institutions will be able to participate on the exchange after registering with this ifsca that is international financial services centers authority Now having seen the basics let us see the advantage of setting up a India International Bullion Exchange First is with the establishment of this kind of exchange all the bullion imports into India can be channeled through it Next the exchange will help in the price discovery process to occur organically Here price discovery is nothing but the market price determined through interaction between the sellers and buyers The next one is quality. See with all bullion imports into India channeled through this exchange, the quality of gold can be ensured. The major advantage is setting up of India International Bullion Exchange will ensure sourcing integrity. See gold can be sourced or bought from a variety of places. When the gold is sourced from a conflict area or if the gold is mined in war zones and if the gold is sold to finance conflicts it is called blood gold with India International Bullion Exchange the presence of blood gold in India can be prevented and the sourcing integrity can be ensured okay so that's all about this news article see this news article is very much important for your upcoming mains examination and also for your preliminary examination See why I say this is important for upcoming mains examination is it is the very first time that India is having this kind of bullion exchange. So you might be asked to analyze the advantages as well as the disadvantages in this kind of exchange that is initiated in India. See in this discussion we had covered what are all the advantages or what is the need of such a kind of exchange. You can directly utilize these points to enhance your mains answers. 
Okay. Also, if a preliminary type of question is asked regarding the India International Bullion Exchange, you can able to answer it with this information alone. Okay. Now, with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now, have a look at this news article. This news article talks about the core sector output. See this graph here. It shows a month-wise year-on-year growth of India's core sectors. It has expanded to 12.7 percentage in June 2022. This is better when compared to last year's performance, which stood at 9.4 percentage. See, coal, cement, electricity, and refinery products rose to 15 percentage or more, and this is when compared with the June 2021 output levels. Okay. Well, if you take natural gas, steel, and fertilizers, all grew at a milder pace. And lastly, take crude oil output; it has dropped to 1.7 percentage from a year earlier. See, this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us learn about the index of industrial production, that is IIP. Okay. See, the index of industrial production is an index that tracks manufacturing activity in different sectors of an economy. It is the key economic indicator of the manufacturing sector of the economy. It generally measures the industrial production for the period under review, usually a month. as against the reference period generally there is a lag of 6 weeks in the publication of the iip or the index of industrial production this lag i am saying after the reference month ends okay see the office of the economic advisor under the ministry of commerce and industry made the first attempt of compilation and release of iip in the year 1950 this was made with the base year 1937 and the attempt to cover 15 important industries which accounted for more than 90 percentage of the total production of the selected industries and since 1950 the all india iip is being released as a monthly series okay and with the inception of the central statistical organization in the year 1951 the responsibility for compilation and publication of iip was vested with the Central Statistical Organization or we can say CSO see this CSO which operates under the Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation is now known as National Statistics Office that is NSO see the IIP index data once released is also available on the PIB website okay in order to capture the changes in the structure and composition of the industry over time The IIP is periodically revised by changing its base, and this change of base is done to a more recent period. At present, the IIP index is currently calculated using 2011 to 2012 as the base year. And note that the base year was changed to 2011 to 12 from 2004 to 5, and this was made in the year 2017. Okay among the various items included in the index of industrial production electricity crude oil coal cement steel refinery products natural gas and fertilizers are the eight core industries okay and these industries comprise about 40% of the total weight of items included in the index of industrial production remember mining manufacturing and electricity are the three broad sectors in which iip constituents fall the nso uses secondary data to reach the monthly iip number and the data is sourced from various agencies in different ministries or departments of the government the department of industrial policy and promotion no is the source for the major chunk of data for the calculation okay so that's all about this news article In this news article we had discussed about the index of industrial production which is an important index to measure the performance of each sector okay especially for calculating the performance of the core industrial sectors this is very much important and note that as mains is fast approaching you can utilize the data that we had discussed in this discussion and also for your preliminary preparation regarding this index of industrial production whatever we discussed can be put up as a preliminary type of question Okay so with these key points in mind now let's move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article the news article says that CJI that is chief justice of India Mr NV Ramana is about to retire but yet 
there is no official announcement about who the next CJI or the Chief Justice of India is going to be. The Memorandum of Procedure of Appointment of Supreme Court Judges states that the appointment of CJI is based on seniority. So as per seniority, next in line is Justice UU Lalit. This is about the news article given here. So in this context, let us see some points about the Office of Chief Justice of India or CJI. First, let us see about the selection process. See, the office of the CJI or the Chief Justice of India is a constitutional body established under Article 124. Article 124 Clause 1 says that there shall be a Supreme Court of India consisting of a Chief Justice of India and Judges of Supreme Court. See, it is a convention to appoint the senior most judge of the Supreme Court as the CJI or the Chief Justice of India. This convention was followed from the year 1950 to 1973. See, there are two instances where this convention was broken. First time it was in the year 1973 when Justice A. N. Ray was appointed as the Chief Justice of India by superseding three senior judges. Again in the year 1977, Justice M. U. Beck was appointed as the Chief Justice of India by superseding the then senior most judge. So, although the senior most judge was appointed as the CJI, the government had a discretion to change the convention. Okay? But this discretion of the government curtailed in 1993 by second judge's case. Okay? So, the current procedure for the appointment of CJI is the outgoing CJI recommends his successor. The union law minister forwards the recommendation to the prime minister who in turn advises the president about the CJI appointment. Finally, as per clause 2 of article 124, the president appoints the CJI. See, the Chief Justice of India has no specific term. He stays in office until he attains the age of 65 years. Having seen the selection and the term, now let us see the powers of the CJI. The Chief Justice of India is considered as the first among the equals. He is also considered as the master of the rooster. He is considered as the administrative head of the Supreme Court. As a part of his administrative powers, the CJI allocates the cases to the Supreme Court benches. The Chief Justice of India also decides the size of the benches. Finally, the CJI is the head of the collegium and we know it is the collegium that plays the main role in the appointment of the judges of the Supreme Court. So that's all about this news article. See, in this news article, we covered an important topic for a preliminary examination that is Chief Justice of India. So we discussed about the appointment of CJI or the selection of CJI. Then we saw the powers in terms of the Chief Justice of India. Okay. So with these key points in mind, now let's move on to the next news article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. The news article says that Manas Tiger Reserve has more tigers than tigers. In Manas, the number of tigers is 2.4 times the number of tigers. This observation was made using the camera trap assessment stipulated by National Tiger Conservation Authority that is NTCA. So this is about the news article given here. In this context, let us see some points about the NTCA. See, NTCA is a statutory body. It has been constituted under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. It was established in December 2005 following a recommendation of the Tiger Task Force. The Minister of Environment and Forest is the chairman of NTCA. He is assisted by a vice chairperson who is Minister of State in charge of the Ministry of Environment, Forest, Climate Change. Now let us see the functions of NTCA. See the most important function of NTCA is the administration of Project Tiger. Then, in regards to the tiger reserves in India, all the tiger reserves are administered according to the guidelines set by the NTCA. Also note that no alteration in the boundaries of a tiger reserve can be made except on a recommendation of the NTCA. See, this recommendation of NTCA must be approved by the National Board for Wildlife. See, each state that has a wild tiger population must prepare a tiger conservation plan. And this plan must be approved by the NTCA. The NTCA also evolves management processes to prevent the man-animal conflict that occurs in the tiger reserves. 
See, the NTC also facilitates research on tiger, its co-predators, its prey and its ecology. So, these are the functions of the NTCA. Before concluding, let us also see about the M-Stripes. See, M-Stripes is nothing but a monitoring system for tiger intensive protection and ecological status. This app was developed by the National Tiger Conservation Authority and the Wildlife Institute of India. This was developed in the year 2010. The M-Stripes program uses global positioning system that is GPS, then the general packet radio services GPRS and remote sensing in order to develop a database. This database will help in ensuring effective patrolling and mitigate human wildlife conflict in and around the tiger reserves. Okay, so that's all about this news article. In this news article, we covered about an authority which is the National Tiger Conservation Authority. See, and regarding the tiger conservation, yesterday Kitna ma'am had exclusively covered regarding its conservation process, what are all the needs and conflicts in conserving the tiger population. Okay? So, if you are keenly observing our news analysis regularly, you will be able to have a holistic cover of each and every topic that is mentioned in our syllabus. Okay? And regarding this NTCA, there might be a direct preliminary question also for you. Okay? So, make use of this discussion with these key points in mind. Now, let's move on to the next part of the news article discussion, which is the preliminary practice question discussion. See, today we have four questions in which two questions I will be discussing and two questions will be a quiz question for you. Okay. Now, look at this first question. See, it is regarding the International Financial Services Centers Authority that we saw in our today's discussion. That is, we saw in our today's Boolean Exchange discussion. Okay. Here, two statements are given and whenever two statement question comes, you have to go through both the statements before arriving at the answer. For this question, the answer is option C, both 1 and 2. See, the central government has established the International Financial Services Centers Authority. This is to regulate all financial services in international financial services centers. Okay? And it was established as a statutory authority under the International Financial Services Centers Authority Act 2019. Okay, and it is a single window regulatory institution that would regulate the development of India's first IFSC at Gift City at Gandhi Nagar. Okay, so here the answer for this question is option C, both 1 and 2 are correct statements. Okay, so with this question you will be able to know about this authority today. Okay, now let's move on to the second question. See, the second question is framed regarding the judges of High Court. Here, three statements are given. So, if you just try to eliminate one statement or if you find that one statement is incorrect, you will be able to eliminate few options and you can apply here the elimination technique. Okay. Now, look at the first statement. See, the judges of high court can resign by writing to the governor. This statement is absolutely incorrect. We know that the judges of high court can resign by writing to the president and not governor. So, if you find the statement is incorrect and look at the question, they are asking for correct statements. So, you can eliminate options whichever is containing the statement 1. So, here I am going to eliminate 3 options and we will directly arrive at the answer which is option B, 2 and 3 only. Now, let me read out the statement 2 and 3 which are correct. See, judges of high court has to vacate his or her office when he or she is appointed as a judge of the Supreme Court or when he or she is transferred to another high court. That statement is correct. And look at the third statement. The process of impeachment of a high court judge is similar to that of a judge of a Supreme Court. Yes, that is also correct. See, the judges of a high court can be removed when the motion seeking their removal is passed by a two-third majority in parliament, which is similar to that of the removal of the Supreme Court judge. Okay. So, the answer for this question is option B, 2 and 3 are only the correct statements. Now, displayed here are two quiz questions for you. See, one question is a very easy question that is regarding the index of industrial production. That question you can easily answer. And the other question is a pair-based question. See, go through all the given tiger reserves and locate them in the India map and go through them and this will be very much useful for your preliminary examination. The answer for both the questions will be put up in the comment section. Okay? And I wish you all to go through the question and try answering the question. 
Let me give you 24 hours time to answer this questions. Okay. So that's all for today's discussion. If you like this video, do like, share and comment and don't forget to subscribe to the Shankar IAS Academy's YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.